Interesting phrase written. It says, God looks on the inside, people look on the outside. So you got to take care of both. The inside for God and the outside for people. What's the old phrase? You never have a second chance to make a first impression. So the outside appearance is also valuable as well as the inside vigor and vitality. Somebody says, well, people shouldn't judge you by your appearance. Let me give you a clue. They do. <laughs> they do. You can't bypass that. Now, of course, when people get to know you, they'll judge you by more than just how you appear. But physical, outside, inside. Here's what's good advice. Make sure the outside is an excellent reflection of the inside. Take care of both. Next was your habits. But now smoking. You walk into an office and you say, you know, where's your ashtray? Where's your ashtrays? No ashtrays probably mean what? They don't smoke here. You say, hey, someone say, hey, I'll smoke wherever I please. I'm saying that's okay. But if you knew what it was costing you just to be careless on that, because I'm not talking about the merits of smoke, not smoke. I'm talking about being careful in the marketplace that you don't wipe out unduly chunks of your market that could serve you well and make you money and make you rich just by being careless with habits, habits. Here's another one. I had to work on being late for the people that are always late. You know, what do they care? You know, they're not there when you get there. So it doesn't matter. But if you truly want to make progress, not alienate right in the marketplace, here's what's acceptable to everybody being on time. Right? Not being on time is acceptable probably, you know, to a lot of people, but some it's going to cost you. Now the mind must be nourished. It's got to have good food. Food for thought. Bread for the head, we call it. Yes, you need a slice of toast in the morning, right, for your body, but you need a slice of cassette. A slice of cassette you put in the car system and listen and listen. Let something feed your mind. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Don't just listen to anything and everything. Make sure that you're, you're your own best filter of what goes into your mental factory and spins out the fabric of your life and future. Stand guard at the door of your mind. Spend time. Be a selective listener. But you got to have a good diet, a good mental diet. When you walk into a home and walk into the pantry of the, you know, the kitchen, you take a look what's in there. This, this, this family is either going to be healthy or it isn't going to be healthy. And a lot depends on what's in the cupboard. What you bring home, right, from the grocery store that you feast on for the body. Now here's what's important. A proper menu for the mind to make sure that it's got a wide range of nourishment. Because the mind needs the full education. The education of the dangers of life as well as the possibilities of life. When I teach philosophy, the five major pieces to the life puzzle, here's what we teach in philosophy. Life consists of really two major things. One is avoiding the dangers and taking advantage of the opportunities. That's what life is all about. Avoiding the dangers and taking advantage of the opportunities. Now by education, you've got to be able to see both where somebody points out to you, these are the dangers, these are the possibilities. And if you keep refining your ability to see the dangers, to avoid as many as possible, and to see as many opportunities as possible and to maximize those as you go and refine and go produce and refine, now, that starts to develop the foundation for what we call a good life, a productive life, a fulfilled life. And we need this mental input. Two days is a little staggering in terms of a, sort of a crash program. And you couldn't do it every week, a couple of days every week. It would be too much. But a couple of days to just really concentrate for a while. Hopefully I send you away from here tomorrow a little mind weary right of taking all these notes and trying to get it all and trying to think about it while you take notes i know it's an intense session of a couple of days but i'm telling you it's going to be so valuable for me to express it and for you to get it because then you just load up your wagon full of stuff here mental wagon to take it home and sort it out and decide what's valuable to try today some that you're going to think about a little bit later but now at least you've got it you've got it you've got it so that you'll have mental food to feast on long after the lights are out and we've left the premises. Now, we also need mental exercise. We talked about debate earlier. That's good mental exercise. Is it or isn't it? Here's what's important, to debate with yourself, to look at both sides of the issue. You must be a student of tragedy as well as triumph. You must be a student of ill as well as good. Ideas, 
learning to debate with yourself what's good, what's bad, what's good for you, what isn't good for you. Keep your mind vigorous. Study evil as well as good. You need a good library. And in this library, you need all kinds of diversity. You need a book on Gandhi and you need a book on Hitler. Gandhi to show you how high and lofty someone's ambitions that are noble can go, and the other one to show you how despicable and low someone can sink in terms of pure evil embodied in a human. Don't be afraid of the debate. Don't be afraid of the health debate. Don't be afraid of the religious debate, the spiritual debate. Don't be afraid for something you believe in to be challenged, because that's where the vigor and the and the flourishing of something is. It, it is, survives the debate. If it survives the debate, it's a pretty good idea. A senator in Washington, D.C. says, I got a great idea. Somebody says, oh, let's grab it and run with it. Say, no, we don't just grab it and run with it. What's the Senate for? To debate. And the rest of the Senate says, put your idea on the table and let's debate. Somebody stands up and says, well, I've got three questions about this great idea. And the one who proposed the idea says, wow, I never thought about those three questions. It's a good thing we didn't try this on the people. <laughs> Let's vigorously discuss, right? Not mean-spirited, but to try to find what is the best way, right? Is it or isn't it a good idea? Let's debate, let's refine till we come up with something of value. Okay, mental exercises. So feed the mind, debate, exercise, a continual diet. You can't go too long in between the classes and the schools and the seminars and the sermons where things are being taught of value. Here's what else is important. You gotta go to everything, everything you can afford. Have a good plan, weekly plan, monthly plan to go to a variety of things, go to a variety of things, go to a variety of things. And don't miss, don't miss the chance. Even if you're involved in a certain company and they say, we're going to have a training class. You say, I've been to one of those. I'm asked, you got to go again and you got to go again. You can't get it all the first time. Here's what the early Christians were taught. Don't neglect the assembly. Why? We got a brand new idea. One is it's being challenged. We need the strength of each other and the exchange of ideas to make this thing grow. And 2000 years later, it's a very vigorous movement. But they were taught when it started, don't neglect to get, every time they call a meeting, make sure you're there every time they call a meeting. And whatever industry you're in, whatever company you're in, when they call a meeting, make sure you're there. When they call a little training class, make sure you're there. Here's why. Some of them are going to be life-changing. And you don't know which experience is gonna be life-changing. You can't pick the one. You just got to go, 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 one is life-changing. You go, 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 another one is life-changing. You go again, you go again, you go again, Another one is life changing. For the people that were there, somebody that you met, something that you heard, and that one was just perfect. The atmosphere was right, the crowd was right, and everything was right, and you'll never be the same again. And you don't know which one that's going to be. That's why you've got to pursue. Go often, have a good plan for the search of knowledge and ideas that can inspire it to the best of your potential. So now we've got the physical, we've got the spiritual, we've got the mental parts of personal development. Now let's keep going. Part of personal development has to be refined in the marketplace. Because we're going to we talk a lot about business in these two days because that's sort of my, my thing is business oriented. You go to one speaker and they're more spiritual oriented. Someone else is more health oriented. Mine is probably going to be more business. All of the pieces that help you to start with nothing become something in a, in a more business sense because that's the frame that I come from. So let's talk about this. Now the personal development that you must watch out for, especially in the marketplace. Here's what's key if you want to do well in the marketplace. Study your market. Part of this is regional. If you're in the South, you study the South. What are some characteristics of the Southerners? How about the North? How about the West? How about California versus Brooklyn? Brooklyn was your market, you would study that market. If California is your market, you study this market. Be a student of your market. Now here's what's very important. Your personal behavior in the marketplace. Not just what you know and what you've learned, ready now to serve in product or service, but a big share of your future success, both economically and every other way, is gonna lie in your own behavior. This is part of personal development. How do you affect other people? 
Is that going to play a role in the kind of income you have and the kind of future you have? And the answer is yes, of course, yes. Here's one of the most important things to think of in the marketplace, your language. Now, some people who are inclined to use bad language, I'm telling you, in the marketplace is not the place. To use bad language in the marketplace, here's, it's too costly. If you were to add up what it really cost, I'm telling you, you'd be a lot more careful. You've got to shift gears from the bar language to the marketplace language. Some things you can get by with telling a dirty story and, you know, using a little profanity in the bar. But now when it comes to the marketplace, you've got to be careful. Here's why. You can isolate huge chunks of your audience that could give you sales, that could give you all kinds of benefits, that could really help your business to advance. But they're offended by the language. Now, here's what doesn't offend anyone. Good language. You don't usually hear somebody say, how come you don't cuss? Yeah. They don't get on your case for that. So, the dirty story that might have been okay in the bar is not okay in the marketplace. You just, you gotta be careful of your language. Here's why, too costly. Isolating maybe a big chunk of your language. Now, for a little circle that you belong to, it's okay. The language, the stories, all the stuff is okay but not in the general marketplace. So you must study your marketplace and say, hey, one thing I must watch, and that's my language in the marketplace. Now, bad language is perfectly acceptable for, to the people who use bad language. I mean, they got no problem with that, but the people who don't see. So why not operate on the safe side? Here's the key. Be on the conservative side when it comes to behavior in the marketplace. Of all the places to be conservative, this is it, why? You, you become offensive to almost no one. Now, you've even got to watch your language, and it's not a matter of profanity or dirty stories. You've got to watch. Here's a key phrase. Beware of using inside lingo on the outside world. You know, all the computer guys had to learn that, right? They got off in this spacey kind of language stuff, and they found out people that bought their computers didn't know how to run them simply because they couldn't understand the language. Now they had to say, well, we can use this language among ourselves, the computer lingo among ourselves, but we got to shift gears now in the marketplace and make this user-friendly in terms of language that people can understand. So strange language in the inside circle of business and so on is okay, but you have to sort of shift gears now when you get out into the market.